So we'll start in two minutes time. So we have discussed about the the concept of velocity potential function and the uh, concept of stream functions. Let's discuss something about the physical significance of uh, stream functions. No, 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 no. Today, how it is possible? 10, 10, 50 already will be there, right? No. So, not on the physical significance of physical significance of physical significance of stream function. Sign. So the, consider a flow domain like this. Here we have the y. Here we have the x. Now you uh, try understanding. Here what we can have uh, the streamlines psi four, psi three, psi two. This is nothing but psi one. Not visible. Just wait. Now it is visible. So physical significance of stream function, where we will discuss, uh, we have taken the four streamlines, <coughs> which are parallel with each other, just like a eleven of flow, which are which is there. Now here, uh, what I'm just saying to you. Uh, uh, and these streamlines are constant streamlines. These streamlines are constant. Like they will not change along the line that a stream function will not change. This will be the constant. This is constant, right? So here what I'm saying, uh, d psi, total d psi when you write, what you can write? Uh, according to from maths, from maths, total difference, uh, differentiation of d psi, what you can write, dou psi by dou x into dx plus do sine by do y into dy so d psi we can write see uh, what is a what is a do sine by do x what is the u value u what is the formula for u do sine by do y and what is the formula for v do sine by do x with the minus sign getting my point so here what uh, we can write uh, here, but uh, there is a no vertical component of velocity because we are taking psi as a constant, so this will be zero. So what we can write? What we can write? This will be zero because dou psi by dou x. When you just move along the x direction, let's say from here to here x1, and from here to here this is x2. Dou psi by dou x will be zero. Dou psi by dou x will be zero. D psi, and what is this? This is nothing but u. So this will be u into dy. So 
what we can write when you just multiply with the width into width so what you will be getting d psi will be equal to d psi will be equal to u into width into dy right dy is a distance from two streamline distance between the two streamlines so what you will be getting you will be getting the some flow area flow rate like this this is a width w this i am calling width w and here we have dy that is a distance between the two streamlines and here what we can have uh, what, what what we used to write uh, this discharge a into velocity right and what is the area what is the area my different area will be tell me guys dy into width that is the area through which it will flow when you just consider the three dimension view of that now d sign will be q into one divided by what width so difference between the two streamline difference of two streamline like psi 2 minus psi 1 if i just take the mod it will give me discharge per unit width make a note of it do psi by do x will be zero not d psi remember that Now, once it is done, let me know. This is also constant. This is also constant. Yes, yes. Discharge or volumetric flow rate. Both are same. Q discharge. Volumetric flow rate. All are same thing. U is at this one velocity, this velocity U. No, that is for all. For a very general case, this we are discussing. For a 2D flow, it is valid. So this formula will be valid for 2D, like 2D flow. Equipotential flow, that is a different thing. Equipotential flow is uh, about, uh, they are talking about D5, that is, phi will be constant, right? That In that case, phi will be constant. Velocity potential function will be constant. Not d psi by dx or dou psi by dou x or what you can write here. Uh, it's better to say dx is zero. Dx is zero, right? Because when I move from here to here, from one point to another point two, I am moving along the constant x. Or if I am just calculating the discharge from here to here, point point number three, or let's say one dash two two dash. So I am moving in a y direction. So I am taking this dx to be constant, right? See. Both are one and two points, both are at the same distance from the inlet section. So dx will be zero rather to say uh, dou psi by dou x will be zero, right? So that is a, not a good thing. So you can write dx will be zero directly. Getting my point, all of you. That's why we are writing this d psi between the two points, not along the same streamline. We are writing across the streamline, right? Writing this 
across these streamlines. Getting my point, all of you. I think now the doubt will be clear. So some of you, I think uh, you might have the doubts. Dx will be zero, not uh, do sign by do x, because I thought we are applying on the same streamline, but we are not applying on the same streamline. Because if you apply along the same streamline, d psi will be zero, right? For the same streamline, for the same, for the same streamline. Correct. Correct. That is for the same streamline, but we are writing for the across the streamline, two streamlines, psi one, psi two, and in between that, there will be discharge per unit width. Now, once it is done, let me know. Is it done, all of you? No, see along this, see along the same streamline, you have the sine constant, right? This is a constant. It will not vary. So better that you don't write this thing. Please do not write. D psi will be zero directly. That is a, this we are talking about equi streamlines. Equi streamlines, getting a point. Is it done? Can I move to the next one? Please note on pass. Please join the class on time, guys. I cannot wait actually. This is a dy. dy is a gap between the two streamlines. dy. This is a gap between the two streamlines. Uh, now, when you see this sir, one, hello, sir. Uh, uh, can you go to the previous slide, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, here we are doing a partial differentiation with x, no, sir. That means we are uh, assuming y, uh, y is a constant. Then, uh, if you assume uh, we are y is assuming, a constant, then... no, we are assuming x is a constant. Uh, from no, sir, say, uh, from if, if you... x for one and two, both the points x is same, right? Dx will be so, zero. Uh, so if you are uh, doing uh, d psi by d, do, uh, do psi by do x, that means uh, we are doing a partial differentiation. Sir. That means uh, we are assuming y is a constant. No, no, psi, that means, psi uh, is of actually a function of both x and y, right? So by the mathematics, we can write d psi equal to do psi by do x into dx. Just like what we write some other function, right? Okay. Plus dou sine by dou y into dy. Initially, it was the function of both x and y. But we are writing, this is a very general equation, but we are converting this equation for across the two streamlines, keeping x constant, right? 1 and 2, for 1 and 2, x is constant. For 1 dash and 2 dash, again, x will be constant. Maybe this will be x dash. So this is a sign function they have given in the problem. They are asking what is the flow rate across the line joining A and B points. So flow across the A point minus B point. If I just take the difference, I will be getting the flow rate. Or simply I will call this to be discharge. Now, please tell me answer guys very quickly. Psi A will be at a point uh, 3 comma 0. What is the formula we have? Directly put the values. Psi A. 2 into B square into 0 plus X plus 1. X is what? 3 plus 1 into 0. That is 0. 
sin at b when you calculate 0 comma 2 you will put the values to 0 again that will be 0 plus 0 plus 1 into 4 that is equal to 4 so directly answer will be c Now make a note of it. Is it done? Now try to solve this uh, one uh, another simple problem. The line of uh, study two dimensional uh, flow through the channel of height 0.2 meter. The total height. Uh, This total height is 0.2 meter when you just calculate 0.2 meter point, point 0.1 plus 0 0.05 0, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.10 uh, so they are asking where sine is a stream function in meter square per second why the unit is meter per, per meter square per second because discharge unit is what meter cube per second but we are writing psi that is equal to per unit width width is what meter so that's how we are getting meter square per second. Uh, that is another thing. And between the two streamlines, whenever we take two streamlines, I will be getting one discharge. One discharge. Between these two streamlines, another discharge. Another discharge. Another discharge. So Q1 will be equal to psi1 minus. Suppose this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Psi1 minus psi2. Like that you can do. Sine 4 minus sine 5. Sine 5 minus sine 6. Uh, sorry. Only Q4 is there. And at the end of the day, total volumetric flow rate will be Q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q5 or you can directly write q2 to be equal to psi1 minus psi what 1 2 3 4 5 5 directly you will be getting b because 1 minus minus 1 that is equal to 2 or you can do in this way and you can add it Now, what is the slope of equi streamlines and equi potential lines? What is the slope of equi streamlines and equi potential lines? See, guys. Yeah, both. Both when you multiply, that will be minus one. Okay, fine. So here, uh, I think all of you have noted down. Done. Now here, just note down equipotential function lines. Equipotential function lines. Let's say we have 
pi that is equal to constant and here if i just take pi is a function of both x and y from maths from maths d5 will be equal to dou pi by dou x into dx dou pi by dou y into dy pi is constant so this d5 will be zero and by the formula we know that u is equal to what we have defined dou pi by dou x and v we have defined dou pi by dou y this is u dx plus v dy that is equal to zero the slope of this equipotential line this slope we are calculating the slope this dy and dx so dy by dx will be minus u by v where u is a x component of velocity v is y component of velocity similarly we can define equi streamlines slope the lines of a slope for equi streamlines equi streamlines where psi is constant psi is what constant so what you can write my different d psi will be equal to dou psi by dou x into dx dou psi by dou y into dy and here if i want to calculate the slope of this equi streamlines slope theta dy by dx if i want to calculate so this is zero for a equi streamline because psi will be constant so d psi will be zero then what we can write uh, that is minus v dx plus u dy that is equal to zero so dy by dx will be v by u so let's say this is a slope m2 this is a slope m1 and what is m1 into m2 when i do that i'll be getting minus 1 whenever the two lines this line this is having a slope m2 when this line this is a slope having m1 when the two lines are when we just take the uh, product of these two lines slope of these two lines when they are we are getting minus 1 that is what two lines are perpendicular to each other slope of the m1 and m2 are perpendicular to each other and that is how we are getting the flow net flow net is a graphical representation of equipotential line and equi stream function lines equi stream function lines rather to say lines we can write equi stream function lines it's a graphical representation of you know uh, it shows of basically like a missing structure where uh, both phi and psi are valid both are defined that flow net is defined only for 2d incompressible irrotational flow that that is a sign physical significance of that flow net So here, uh, when I draw the flow net, it is something like this. So when you draw the flow net, it will be like this, kind of. So let's say this is my psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3. So I'm discussing a very uh, little bit of that. The remaining thing will be discussed by uh, aerodynamic faculty. So here when I take the slope of this one and the slope of this one, 
both will be perpendicular always they will be perpendicular right no they will always be perpendicular low velocity high velocity medium velocity any velocity what is flow net it is a graphical representation of as long as the flow is irrotational and incompressible it is a graphical representation of equi potential and equi stream function lines what about m1 and m2 that will be always minus 1 right any condition we have imposed that if velocity will be very low then only minus 1 we are getting nothing like that right high velocity means what turbulent flow in turbulent flow also if flow net will be there even though high mixing will be there among the fluid layers still this phi and psi will be perpendicular to each other Take my point. Try to see on Google uh, flow net for turbulent flow, and just check it out whether any mergings are happening or not. It will not happen. It is valid for two D irrotational. Why it is valid for two D? No, why not for three D? An incompressible flow. In compressible why not it is valid for 3d because psi is not defined for 3d psi is not defined for 3d and why it is valid for irrotational because phi is there and because of phi irrotational right incompressible then psi will be there right now for this to happen flow net for flow net to happen del square phi will be zero del square psi automatically will be zero so the question they ask in aerospace right few years back regarding uh, one statement indirectly they want to ask about flow net only now once it is done let me know we can start uh, fluid dynamics No, no, no. Yeah, we are generally calling. See, we are generally call, actually phi is a function of both x and y, right? In a particular flow field, uh, you are defining the coordinate system. Origin is there, and here x is there, here y is there, right? So at any particular point, whenever you are defining, just say uh, you have solved an example, right? Let's say here you can see phi psi. It is a function of both x and y, right? Means you want to move the coordinates. In x direction, in the y directions, right? It is a 2D flow, so it is a function of both x and y. It is not only the function of y; it is not only the function of x. Getting my point? Why we are writing like that? Where it is gone? And why we are saying d phi zero? Because along this, you know, what will happen? Uh, means this phi is constant for all the lines. For all the lines, phi is constant. So d phi anyway, it will be zero, right? If I anyway, it will be zero. Getting my point or not? Yes or no, guys? Now tell me, do you know something about source and sink? Like, if I just want to draw the flow net for other types of flow then what we can draw here i just wait here we can write wait actually i'm moving in a reverse direction
Now try understanding what I'm saying. Now how the flow, how the flow net will be for uniform flow, uniform flow. If I just say uh, constant diameter pipe, let's say the flow is happening in a constant diameter pipe. How the flow net will be? Uniform flow, uniform flow. It will be parallel, right? This I can write psi 4, psi 3, psi 1, psi 5. And then how the phi will be? The phi will be perpendicular, right? Phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4. At any time, they will be perpendicular. So it is an example of uniform flow. What the example we can have? Constant diameter pipe in which the flow is happening like this. Now, whether it is a laminar or turbulent, the flow, the flow net will be like this only. Now, when we have accelerating flow, how the flow net uh, will look like? Can it will be? The pattern will not be like a constant gap between the lines. Why I will tell you. It will try to converge. It will try to converge as it is moving towards the this particular end. So when you see from here inlet section to here, the velocity has been increased. When the velocity has been increased, right, what is the discharge formula? Area into velocity. Velocity has been increased, right? And discharge is what? Discharge is basically the difference between the two streamlines, right? So this discharge will be constant. Now, automatically, velocity has been increased for maintaining the constant uh, discharge or to satisfy the mass conservation, area has to decrease in between the two streamlines. That's why area has been reduced. Here, area is decreased. Here, area is what? More as compared to that. If here, here area is what A1, here area is what A2 between the two streamlines. Now A2 has been decreased and A1 has been increased. Means A1 is more as compared to A2. This is a streamlines. What about the pattern of phi? Like this phi1, phi1, phi2, phi3. Right. At any point, when you draw the tangent, they will be perpendicular. Similarly, what about decelerating flow? What about for decelerating flow? They will be like diverging from each other, right? Something like this. And this is my psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4. And we can draw like this. And the flow direction will be like this. Here the flow direction will be something like this. No down. Once it is done, let me know. All the things you will discuss once again in aerodynamic subject. So you do not bother about that. Now, what will be the source? How the pattern of streamlines? How the pattern of streamlines? Source means sprinkles. When I just take these sprinklers, you know, so what will happen to these sprinklers? Water will be going and they will be striking and they will be coming out. Right, and they will be start rotating by omega. So this will be basically throwing the water. So sprinkles are there. Sprinkles are the example of source, right? Now tell me what about the pattern of streamlines for source? Where exactly circular motion is there? Circular means what? Circle will be there because when you draw the tangent, when you draw the tangent, you will be getting the velocity vector, right? 
So definitely they are moving in a circular path because of a sprinkler. Example is what? Sprinkler. Now in this one, what you can write? Circle you can make. Different different circles you make you can make. Right? Like this. Or maybe you can just write uh, not a circle one. Here, uh, tell me guys, this circle will be for phi or sine? This circle will be phi or sine? No, I, I just thought of, no, no, I just thought of uh, swirling flow. No, 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 not swirling flow. I am talking about source, sprinklers. Now tell me, this circle is for phi. Now, how about the sine? What about the sine? It is radially outwards direction, right? Radially outward directions. Like this, can I make? Let's check it out. Psi 1, Psi 2, Psi 3, Psi 4. Because they will be directed radially outwards from the center of rotations. Getting my point. And this circle will be my Phi 1, Phi 2, Phi 3. Phi 1, Phi 2, Phi 3. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. That is correct. Now, nobody has confu confusion, right? Initially, I thought for swirling kind of flow, swirling flow, right? Swirling flow, what will be the pattern of uh, streamlines? If any, anywhere we have the huge amount of swirling, right? Then it will be a circle one, getting a point. Yeah, correct. That will be a circular one. But here for the source one, it is directed upwards, directed in the radially outward direction. So we can write psi one, psi two like this. We can show like this. What about sink? Any example we have for the sink? Wash basin, right? Whatever the water flow is there in the wash basin, they will be directed upwards. They will be directly like this, like this, right? So what is happening with this one? They are directed what towards inwards or outwards? Inwards. Getting my point. So what we can write here? Again, the circle will be there for phi. And here, my dear friend, for this one, we can have like this. We can have, uh, you can prove it with the help of, with the help of equation also. So here you can write psi 2, psi 1. Right? Because when you take source and sing at the same time, when you just take the source and sing at the same time, for example, what the pattern will develop when you take the source and sink at the same time my dear friend what the pattern will discover this is what the pattern doublet you have seen that right when you take the source and sink at the same time so when you draw like flow over the cylinder right flow over the cylinder when you just take the example there will be combination, they, there will be pattern of streamlines, there will be pattern of streamlines, that will be combination of source and sink, getting a point, that is a combination of source and sink, and both are placed inside the cylinder, this is a cylinder, cylinder or a sphere, whatever you can have, the pattern of a streamline, that is what has been developed, this is my phi 2, this is my phi 1. Yes. Now, once it is done, let me know. No, that will be discussed. That will be discussed by sir, aerodynamics, sir, because you have separate topic for this uh, ideal potential flow theory. Now tell me ideal potential flow theory, what the assumptions we have made. Whenever the flow is assumed to be, let's say, potential flow on a, any surface, curved surface, then what will happen? Meanwhile, you can discuss and you can think of the answer. Uh, let me start the fluid dynamics.
slow down fluid dynamics not on the Bernoulli equations Bernoulli equation is an approximate air rotational incompressible yeah. uh, Bernoulli equation is an approximate relationship between the pressure velocity and elevation height and it is valid in the region of steady incompressible flow where the net frictional effects are negligible so here uh, no i'm asking you suppose we have cylinder we have cylinder and the suppose cylinder has been placed in a wind tunnel testing machine and u infinity is a flow which is happening flow over the cylinder now tell me now tell me in this case my dear friend you believe that uh, there is a boundary layer formation or not if i just take the flow domain like this so you believe that there will be some boundary layer formations there will be some velocity gradient and there will be some something called flow suppression will happen that's how the region of wake has been formed but my question is when you study ideal potential flow so suppose now my flow is what uh viscid flow right means i am considering my flow to be like viscid flow but if i just assume completely in viscid flow then what will happen because because of wake formation pressure will be what very very low pressure is very very high so there will be some pressure drag there will be some pressure drag but when i assume my flow to be in viscid flow there will not be any pressure drag that is for sure will be there any boundary layer formations will be there any boundary layer formations in case of in viscid flow there will not be any boundary layer formations and when there is a no boundary layer formation no viscous drag no pressure drag even no question questioning about the boundary layer separation so if somebody will ask you whether boundary layer separation can happen for in viscid flow ideal flow no answer will be no right that's a small discussion i would like to take now it is over now you can just make it as a note point and you can note somewhere because sometimes our mind doesn't go there but it, actually it is very important Bernoulli equation when you write so what is the Bernoulli equations so sum of the pressure energy kinetic energy plus potential energy will remains constant always just like a conservation of mechanical energy right conservation of mechanical energy here p by rho g is a pressure head if i multiply with the if i just multiply with the term called c unit is meter right and if i just multiply if i want to convert into pressure energy what should i do here this is what kinetic head this is what we have potential head this is what we have potential head this is the uh, kinetic head we have and pressure head we have now what will happen uh, what about the kinetic energy kinetic energy we used to write half of mv square we can further write half of rho or we can directly write if i just want to write directly the kinetic energy half of mass flow rate into v square this is what we have the rate of kinetic energy or kinetic energy we have right so and what about the potential energy mgh or mgz similarly what about the pressure energy what about the pressure energy my dear friend what about the pressure energy what we can write what is actually meaning of pressure energy when you think of the pressure energy what you can write the pressure will be there that is newton per meter square and if i multiply with the volume then what we can write meter cube per second so i'll be writing joule per second that is what kind of things right energy in terms of per unit time so here what we can write what is the pressure energy 
What is the pressure energy term representing? Anybody? No. You might be knowing the Bernoulli equation, but you might not be knowing about the uh, what we call pressure energy term. Very good. Flow work. Now, what is the meaning of flow work? And why it is required only in the fluid dynamics, not in the fluid statics? Yes. Now, when you understand here, so better you write this is nothing but pressure into volume. Right. So, directly if I write pressure into volume, so I will be getting pressure into volume, right? P into V. That is like a flow work. That is like a flow work, right? This is nothing but flow energy. Minimum energy required for the fluid to flow across the control volume. Or in the uh, uh, basically what uh, basically to cross the control volume, this is the minimum amount of energy which is required. This energy will not be required for the what we call control mass system, right? For a control mass system, we not, do, do not require this thing. Why? Because see, for a uh, for any uh, what we say control mass, uh, let's say this is a ball, we have only internal energy. But suppose this ball will be we are treating like a control volume and suppose some flow is happening over this one so now we represent enthalpy not by internal energy for our open system very good so we write h is equal to u plus pv so there apart from this uh, internal energy we have flow work there also so this extra flow work which is coming that is what you know uh, this pressure head or pressure energy that is also required kinetic energy also required and maybe fluid is there at some height so pressure energy, I mean potential energy will also be having in the fluid element. So make a note of it, very, very important. And of course, fluid dynamics, whatever the pipe flow and all we are studying, we are discussing about the open system only, right? Across which mass can flow, energy can transfer, right? We are not discussing anything about the closed system. Internal energy is valid. Uh, means if I talk about energy of a body or a fluid particles for a closed system, internal energy will be very good idea about that. But for open system, I cannot write U. I have to write enthalpy because U plus PV will, will be there. If PV will, be, PV will be zero, flow work will be zero, mass cannot flow. Again, that will become like a closed system. So if somebody will be asking you what is the meaning of pressure energy, you have to define like that. This is a very important Now we have to see the assumptions in this equations and that is a very important assumptions that we have to discuss. Done all of you? Is it done for all? Now, try understanding what I'm just saying to you. Okay. This Bernoulli equation, what we are writing, that is valid for, uh, that is also called as Euler momentum equation or Euler momentum equations along the streamline in a steady flow. But there is a slight difference between the Euler equation and Bernoulli equation. Anybody know that? We have discussed uh, in Navier Stokes equations what we have discussed. We have discussed Navier Stokes equation. Suppose we are writing x momentum equation. 
rho into ax that is equal to minus dou p by dou x plus mu body force term when this viscous force will be zero when the viscous force will be zero then we have this equation to be called as euler equation Euler equation is valid for inviscid flow, but it is valid for both. It is valid for both incompressible as well as compressible. Compressible fluid and incompressible fluid. Right, it is compressible for both incompressible and compressible. Yes, it is only valid for inviscid and valid for both compressible as well as incompressible. So, uh, your Navier Stokes equation uh, will become what? Minus dou p by dou x plus body force term. When can happen this situation? When this situation can happen? When Reynolds number is very, very high. What is Reynolds number? Inertia force to the viscous force. When Reynolds number is very, very high, my dear friend, when Reynolds number is very, very high, your viscous forces will be very, very low. When the viscous forces will be very, very low, when the viscous forces will be very, very low, in that case, your Navier-Stokes uh, equation will reduce to Euler equations. There is another case, put a note. When Reynolds number is very, very low, very, 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 very low, then what will happen? Inertia force will be not dominating, viscous force will be dominating. In that case, what we can write? This is nothing but inertia term. This inertia term will be gone. This inertia term will be gone and you will be left with pressure term and this one plus body force. What this equation we call tripping flow. Yes or no guys? All of you are getting my point or not? When inertia force will become very very low viscous forces will be very very dominating that will be a creeping flow like just like a honey flow honey flow is there right honey is a highly viscous fluid right when it is flowing you will not feel anything that it is just moving like a solid body only very 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 suppose you have honey when you take out honey you know what will happen it is highly viscous fluid right so it will not at all flow that smoothly or that fluently so that is nothing but creeping flow. Another example of creeping flow is uh, suppose you have object, right? Basically, this particular object is uh, traveling in the downward direction in an atmosphere. So you will be having what will what will be there? You will be having buoyancy force, drag force. All the forces will be acting on a particle. This particle, right? This particle, whatever the flow will be there, that we can treat it like a creeping flow, right? Viscous forces are dominating in that case as compared to the inertia force because particle is what? Of very, very small mass. The small mass means small inertia will be there, right? So that is like a creeping flow. Now, once it is done, let me know. Make a note of it. So Euler momentum equation, we have to write dp by rho. Not we have to write uh, rho. We, we cannot take rho out, outside of this integration because Rho we are treating like a not constant one. We are generalizing this for compressible and incompressible both. Incompressible and compressible. So X momentum equation I have written right. See what is the doubt in that? 
no you just go back to fluid statics there we have discussed this uh, particular x momentum equations this is the viscous term right when the reynolds number is very very high viscous term directly gone right i am not saying that mu is zero i am saying this this particular term this particular term will be gone as this term will be very very negligible as compared to inertia term as well as uh, pressure term this is the pressure term this is the inertial term or rather to say inertia term right but uh, how we have derived x momentum what is the role you please uh, see these fluid statics lecture right we have discussed the de uh, sort derivation of sort version of uh, navier stokes equations not with this complete term because that will take a whole one class for derivation of navier stokes equations now is it done for all can i move to the next one so yes it is some of the kinetic energy potential energy and flow energy of a fluid particle i think some of the kinetic energy potential energy and flow energy of a fluid particle is constant along a streamline during a steady flow when compressibility and frictional effects are negligible now just wait note down the assumptions of bernoulli assumptions of bernoulli equations that is a very simple equations we have what are the assumptions of bernoulli equations we have the flow must be in viscid flow must be in viscid now why the flow must be in viscid if it is a viscid flow there will be some viscous effect will be there and some of the mechanical energy cannot be conserved second one flow must be steady i'm talking about ideal bernoulli equation ideal bernoulli what is the meaning of ideal bernoulli equation p by rho g p1 by rho g plus v1 square by 2g plus z1 equal to p2 by rho g plus v2 square by 2g plus z2 i'm talking about specifically about this ideal bernoulli equation remember ideal bernoulli equation but this assumptions are derived on the basis of this ideal bernoulli equations right if you just follow these assumptions you will derive this one it doesn't mean that it is not valid for unsteady flow it is not valid for compressible flow you have the bernoulli equation for compressible flow also but that is a sub separate thing you know in sengel textbook when you go you can find this uh, the compressible flow you know uh, bernoulli equations there also right now here correct flow must be along the same streamline flow must be along the same streamline but this condition is there only for which one there is the one important assumption is there what is that important assumptions we have important assumption is that tell me guys even though in viscid flow we have there is a no chance of rotationality but still we are why we are bothering about uh, flow must be along the same streamline for rotational flow very good for rotational flow my dear friend like a force vortex flow for a force vortex flow right for a force vortex flow when you are applying the two uh, two points you have to apply bernoulli equation between the two uh, points along the same streamline not somewhere here and there like this 
one point is here one point is two point is here you cannot apply like this why why you cannot apply because see it is an invisible flow but rotational externally we have applied some kind of rotation fourth one Bernoulli equation can be applied anywhere. Bernoulli equation. Can be applied. Anywhere in the flow field. Can be applied. in between two points and that two points need not to be on the same streamline for irrotational flow. For irrotational there is no chance of rotationality right and there will not be any uh, some kind of streamlined pattern to be destroyed and all right in case of irrotational it is a invisible it is irrotational there is no chance of rotationality so we can apply Bernoulli equation between any two points in the flow field right note on the fifth assumptions what is the fifth assumptions we have anybody know that Flow must be or fluid must be incompressible. Fluid must be incompressible. Now, once it is done, let me know. Now tell me on the basis of this theory, tell me, uh, can we apply the Bernoulli equation? Can we apply the Bernoulli equation inside the, what we call, suppose flow over the flat plate, a boundary layer is there. Can we apply the Bernoulli equation from here to here? Let's say we have the streamline one and two. Can we apply like this? Streamlines are there like this, suppose, for example. Point number one, point number two. See, inside the boundary layer, we have visit, visit region plus rotational region is there. And you can apply the Bernoulli equation when you have in visit plus rotational. You can apply, you can apply, right, along the same streamline. along the same streamline then tell me why uh, don't you think that whatever the airfoil theory lift is there whatever the lift theory is there for the airfoil right whenever the fluid is flowing like this you know you used to say that upper region is what we have the larger area then what we can have the lower portion is what lower portion whatever is there we have the higher pressure and top face what we have the lower pressure is there right we used to say like this for the lift theory and all tell me guys what is the theory we have please recall that whatever the lift theory is there what we used to apply what we used to apply for the lift theory Upper region is a low pressure region, a very, very high plus, uh, velocity regions, right? Because air has to travel a uh, longer distance 
here air has to travel from point number 1 to point number 2 a longer distance now to meet at the same point it has to travel with some high velocity and here it can travel from 1 to 2 1 dash to 2 in a very short uh, uh, no uh, shorter distance is there so uh, uh, the, this velocity has to be low so according to bernoulli what will happen according to bernoulli what will happen tell me guys so here the lift theory will be saying that pressure is high pressure is low lift will be generated but is that true this particular theory because my dear friend whenever you take the aerofoil section right and whenever the fluid is flowing in that aerofoil section there will be some boundary layer formations this is a boundary layer region viscous region right you cannot apply bernoulli uh, inside that right so definitely whatever the theory was there that is the incorrect theory incorrect theory for lift generation so there must be a correct theory what is that correct theory anybody know that what is that uh, prentel and kutta theory what is that theory see lift is uh, whenever lift is there lift has something to do with the curvature you know whenever we have anything curvature right so definitely curvature is there so there will be some pressure gradient will be there and because of the pressure gradient lift force will be generated and how that pressure gradient will be there uh, that equation that equation i will derive dp by dr that is uh, rho v square upon r this thing we will discuss when you just apply the bernoulli equation perpendicular to streamline you will be getting uh, two things one is in the radial direction other will be uh, what along the jet direction so here you will be having uh, pressure variation along the radial directions the lift has to do something with the curvatures that is a very very important right but most of you most of the time you will find this particular yeah whatever you guys are saying that is also correct but this this theory is incorrect don't say in interview right how the lift how the aircraft is flying don't say uh, that particular theory what the bernoulli has said yeah that is correct anybody know circulation lift theory that is also there correct circulation lift theory correct you try to give the answer either by this which i will discuss right and at the end of the course how the aircraft is flying or the circulation lift theory is there that you give the answer right but whenever you ask any candidate of uh, aerospace background he used to say this particular theory pressure is high at the bottom surface and pressure is low, basically what low at the top surface so because of the pressure difference this lift force will be generated that is incorrect the lift force actually has to be zero you cannot generate any kind of lift because of that no now uh, can i move to the next about this uh, bernoulli equation with the head loss this is a real bernoulli equation when you just apply the bernoulli equation between the two points in a flow field point number one and point number two definitely some losses will be there and this loss we call head loss due to friction this thing we will discuss in lavina flow through pipes head loss due to friction now mechanical energy mechanical energy is not being conserved point number one total energy this one but point number two the total energy is not ex means we made equal to e2 but when you just consider only this portion e2 ideal actually it has to be equal to even but it is not equal because some part has been taken by this hf that is a frictional energy correction factor kinetic energy correction factor and all yes that is also there we used to write like this here alpha 1 right alpha 2 here we used to write that is a kinetic energy correction factor and all that we will discuss no need to worry but why we don't uh, take that into account whenever you see any calculation practical calculation also you will see alpha is being neglected 
kinetic energy correction factor Uh, that kinetic energy correction factor will be taken as almost equal to 1.03 for a turbulent flow right in a real practical situation most of the flows are turbulent flow and the values of uh, turbulent flow you know basically kinetic energy correction factor is 1.03 even for a laminar flow when you consider alpha value is what 2 so when you multiply 2 with the v1 square by 2g the two multiplication will not change that much, right? In most of the flow situation, the pressure energy dominates as compared to the kinetic energy term. So multiplying with the two doesn't make sense. Uh, until unless that uh, uh, flow is a very, 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 very lambda, very, very low Reynolds number. But in case of suppose most of the cases we have the turbulent flow, right? In nature, why we have the turbulent flow? Because most of the cases we encounter the situation with the air airflow right and airflow which is having a very very low viscosity what is the Reynolds number rho v l by suppose mu right viscosity is very very low so automatically Reynolds number suits up even though you have you have been flowing with a uh, 5 meter per second or 10 meter per second it's still viscosity is very very low for the air such a way that Reynolds number suits up and it gives rise to the values of what turbulent flow right so what will happen in this case we have the value 1.03 1.03 doesn't make sense right almost equal to 1 so we don't multiply with this alpha kinetic energy correction factor in actual conditions but this hf is very very important and it plays a very important significant role in pumping power right when we just pump it with the help of some pump uh, we have to supply extra energy that is rho g q hf that is what pumping uh, no basically extra power we have to give if you are not giving, we cannot flow that to it. Now, once it is done, let me know. So whenever, don't try to give this particular explanation. I don't find this to be very accurate. Whether some, no, sometimes you argue that, sir, these are the, basically, we have been telling that, we have been told from the childhood days, still we are doing the master or we have completed BTEC. But our faculty used to say the lift has been generated by that only because they may think that this boundary layer is very, very small region. So we are tempted to think we are applying this P and velocity relations or Bernoulli away from the wall. But even though it is a very negligible boundary layer, how can you generate that? Right. Now, can I move to the next one? Now try to solve this particular question and let me know the answer with the help of Bernoulli equations. There is a tank, there is a liquid which is being flowing in a pipe of some S shape. They are asking what is the discharge velocity at the pipe exit? Pipe exit here. What is the velocity? Let's say the point number two. What is that? Yeah, that gradient effect is there, but Whenever you try to argue with those candidates, those who give the explanation, they used to say that boundary layer regions are very, very small as compared to the fluid domain, right? Whenever you do any analysis, you select the flow domain, right? Suppose you are taking CD nodal in that analysis you are taking, then definitely you will take some domain. What is this? Some inlet velocity. This is what we have, what we call uh, outlet pressure condition no slip condition and here when you take the axis symmetry model so whenever we used to think of writing the uh, no whenever we do project using cfd simulations or NCS fluent we used to give we used to create the flow domain right this flow domain might depend which is being created in such a way that it is not too large not too short but it is sufficient to have the physical effect on a particular body or whatever the flow domain which are happening Right. In that case, what they will think that so whatever the even the boundary layer formations which are happening that are very very small as compared to fl flow domain, right? So in that case, they can argue, but I don't think so. That is correct explanations, according to my point of view.
So you can apply the Bernoulli equation between one and two. Two points I have taken. So apply the Bernoulli equation between one and two. P one by rho g. What is the height? Let's say this is my reference. From the reference point, point number one is there at a height of what? H. And what is my Bernoulli equation at? Uh, sorry, this total energy at point two, p two by rho g plus v two square by two g plus this height will be capital S minus small h. Now p one and p two both are what? Atmosphere, right? Just at the pipe exit, pressure is what? P atm. Here, what is the pressure? At the free surface, P atm. So this two will be gone. What is the velocity at the free surface? Free surface is like a static fluid, right? And it is also there in a big tank. Suppose this is a tank, and we are writing what is the velocity at point number one? That is almost zero. This is zero. So what we can write V two under root of two g small h. V will be correct. Here, why we are neglecting this one? Because we can write Q divided by area. Area of the tank, we can assume that very, very large, such that velocity will be almost negligible. Whether you consider here velocity, here velocity, here velocity. What about the velocity term? Tell me this. No tank area has not been given, right? In this particular problem, any tank area has been given. So whenever you have the reservoir, reservoir we can consider the point at any point velocity we can consider to be very very small, right? Inside the tank, not inside the pipe. When you consider point number one here, for example, one dash, one dash will not be having zero velocity. It is having some kind of velocity. Getting the point? I'm just ask, telling you inside the tank. Suppose here one double s that is zero. Getting my point, all of you. Yes or no, it's all of your understanding. Now you can apply the Bernoulli equation between one double s and two. What you can write p1 double dash by rho g plus v1 double square by 2g plus height from the reference the height is what same only zero p2 by rho g what we can write plus v2 square by 2g plus h minus h so here what we can write p1 double dash p1 double dash we can write hydrostatic uh, pressure that is uh, rho g capital H plus p atm. P2 is what? P atm. This P atm will be cancel out. H plus P atm by rho g plus this is zero. That is V2 square by 2g plus H minus capital H. So this P atm by rho g here also will be there. This will cancel out. This will cancel out. So once again you will be getting what? Under root of 2gh. That uh, how you now some of you might be again argue that sir you mentioned in the assumption Bernoulli equation applicable along the same spin line yes 
they may be they may have these streamlines like this they may have these streamlines like this so two point one point even one dash are along the same streamlines same fluids are there fluid row here also fluid row right all the things are has been satisfied getting not off yes or no guys all of you understanding assumptions are very very important if you are not able to understand assumptions tricky question you may not be able to get once it is done let me know we can discuss few more constraints regarding uses of bernoulli equations done here we have the practical uh, some restrictions uh, on the bernoulli equations uh, let's say ideal bernoulli equation i'm talking about ideal bernoulli equation the first one is steady flow right the flow must be steady second one the incompressible flow that is appropriate if the flow mach number is less than 0.3 we can assume that flow to be incompressible flow of incompressible fluid when the density changes are very very less than 5% in that case we can assume the mach number to be less than 0.3 and that flow will become what incompressible flow frictionless flow inviscid flow that we already talked about that right and flow must be along the same streamline different streamlines may have different bernoulli constant right this one but this is rare for irrotational flow the bernoulli equation is same everywhere right irrotational means there cannot be any viscous effect there cannot be any rotational defect so definitely we can apply bernoulli anywhere done so whenever uh, sometime in the problem they mention assumptions that uh bernoulli equation applicable for incompressible flow so they wanna they wanna say about incompressible flow of incompressible fluid that is a complete statement uh the hidden meaning behind that statement is incompressible flow of incompressible fluid right once it is done let me know done guys done yes is it over now when you think of this uh, model let's say aircraft is model is there not a prototype actual one i am just uh, we are uh, assuming that to be a model one which is being tested in a wind tunnel so definitely when the flow is there 
there will be some boundary layer formation is there. So we cannot apply the Bernoulli equation, right? That is invalid. We cannot apply the Bernoulli equation in those regions. In those regions, we cannot apply the Bernoulli equations because of the viscid and rotational uh, rotationality uh, regions, right? Bernoulli equation invalid. We cannot apply. Now, when the flow is happening, again, there is a boundary layer formations. Again, we cannot apply the Bernoulli equations. They are also near to the uh, turbine. But let's say we have the uh, wind turbine, which is being placed in this section. Again, we cannot apply the Bernoulli equation between 1 and 2. We can apply from 3 to 1, 2 to 4. We can apply. But in between this section, 1 and 2, we cannot apply. Why we cannot apply? Bernoulli equation is not applicable. Ideal Bernoulli equation. Ideal Bernoulli equation not applicable. Why it is not applicable? Because some part of the mechanical energy has been taken by wind turbine. Right. And this might defend this uh, this uh, turbine may be start rotating, you know, when once it will start rotating my different, it may destroy or it may disturb the streamline structure of the flow, right? Here, whatever the streamline is there, which is being converging like this, this after putting this wind turbine, they may start getting mixed. This, this streamline will be start getting mixed, right? The pattern of the streamline will be disturbed. The pattern of the streamline will be disturbed, right? So what we can write here in this region, Streamline pattern may get disturbed, right? If a streamline pattern will get disturbed, if the streamline pattern gets disturbed, then mixing might be there. Mixing will happen. What will happen? Viscous or friction dissipation will happen. Friction dissipation Friction dissipation may happen. Make a note of it. Once it is done, let me know. Right. The pattern of the streamline will get disturbed, guys. One and two point, we cannot apply the Bernoulli equation between the two streamlines. See, it is a rotational region of the flow, but there cannot be guaranteed that inviscid region will remain inviscid in case of turbine will be start rotating. Right. Because of intermixing uh, in between the fluids, the friction might be generated and that will take away some energy. Uh, uh, friction means what? We see it rotational. We cannot apply Bernoulli. It doesn't mean that uh, we don't have any Bernoulli equation for our work producing device. Suppose we have two sections. Here we have the wind turbine, right? Here we have the wind turbine, which is producing the work, which is being generated to the, generated to the which is which basically connected to the shaft of generator, and this generates the electricity, right? For example, this wind turbine we have. But here, what will happen when the flow is happening? We can apply the Bernoulli equation between one and two. That is not the ideal Bernoulli equation, but modif modified Bernoulli equations we call. Plus work of turbine. Like this. That is a real Bernoulli equation or rather to say modified Bernoulli equations. But ideal Bernoulli equation we cannot apply. Correct. Yeah, that is also, yeah, correct. That is also some of the energy can dissipate in increasing the angular velocity of turbine. Well, of course, how the turbine will start rotate. That is a basic uh, principle, right? Whenever the fluid will start hitting the blades, the kinetic energy of the fluid will be converted to mechanical energy of rotor blades, right? Rotational energy of blades. That is a very basic principle behind this uh, rotational phenomena of uh, either wind turbine or any turbine hydraulic turbine or steam turbines.
now gas turbine yes correct now is it done all of you in in in, uh, in the square case we can apply bernoulli equation weight region no we cannot apply in a weak region also in a weak region also we cannot apply i will tell you the meaning of that that's weak regions right no need to worry i will explain you that particular thing by question only see now read this question and tell me the answer the streamline pattern along this uh, sphere which is being there uh, or cylinder they have given this cylinder they have given only one dimensions other dimension let's say this is like this cylinder and the flow is happening like this flow is happening over the cylinder like this right flow is happening over the cylinder something like this so now when the flow will be start happening over the cylinder oncoming flow is a steady irrotational incompressible so we can apply bernoulli equation between any two points 1 and 2 even we can apply bernoulli equation between 5 and 6 can we apply the bernoulli equation between 1 and 6 One and six. They are not on the two. Uh, they are not along the same streamline, but on the two different streamlines. Still, we can apply. We can apply. As long as the flow is is irrotational, incompressible, is steady. But we cannot apply the Bernoulli equation between three and four. This is a nothing but low wake region, right? The flow suppression has happened, and because of that. the wake region has been formed this wake region is my different this is a wake region actually this is nothing but vortex now what is the so special thing about the wake region wake region there is a specialty about the wake region is that it is a low pressure region it is a very very low pressure region plus viscid region now why we see region because see already we know because of the boundary layer formations the flow has been getting de separated uh, the flow has been separated like this something like this the flow has been separated flow separation line now what is happening right what is the region behind the flow separation the region behind the flow separation is the fluid near the solid surface comes to the rest, rest conditions right and after certain point point of time they will be start reversing its directions they will be start reversing its particular directions when they will be start reversing in a particular directions what will happen tell me guys huge amount of viscous force they will import right because see what will happen upcoming air which are flowing this is the cylinder upcoming air which are flowing right because of the boundary layer formations we know that already this is a viscous region right already the boundary layer regions are highly viscous region in that also some boundary layer separations uh, you know flow separation has been occurred so flow near the solid surface near to the flow separation is very very rest conditions is like almost dead right in that also the fluid layer which are coming right it is getting mixed with the this dead body so that is also getting slowed down right that is a one a bad effect of that even though some of the fluids from the back side of that it start flowing in the reverse directions and they will be start dragging that dead body all around the what all around the surface of the cylinder so again that is what the viscid region now my question is you don't you think that is a very uh, misconception about the flow separation see here we have the cylinder and here we have the flow domain here when you think of this region till here it is like a velocity is increasing pressure is decreasing but again this region is what velocity is decreasing pressure is increasing so adverse effect is there where dp by dx is greater than 0 pressure is start decreasing increasing right but tell me when the pressure will be start increasing in this direction in this particular domain that's why the flow uh, is start reversing so don't you think it should be a high pressure region the weak region why it is of low pressure region that is my question you know that flow separation has been occurred because of adverse pressure gradient 
an adverb precedent means p is very very high here p is low here let's say that's why the reverse phenomena has been happening so don't you think that pressure has to be very very high pressure is very high here anybody know the answer or should i answer it flow suppression i will not discuss separately i am discussing through this question only so be very very attentive viscid region we know that it is like a dragging one so definitely it is not a in viscid it is a viscid region correct energy loss will happen see here my dear friend whatever the pressure is increasing that is total phenomena outside the boundary layer the red color boundary layer but my green color which i am drawing right now that is my separate flow suppression which has been taking place inside the flow of inside this flow suppression this wave will be start forming <coughs> when this wave will be start forming my dear friend and this is like a dead body you know the flow has suddenly stopped fluid near to the solid surface has been slowed down when it is being slowed down what will happen total energy whether it is a pressure energy kinetic energy potential energy all will come down so pressure energy also gone down that's why we say it is a low pressure region even though you have the pressure very high here in the boundary layer regions or outside the boundary layer, right but you don't have any uh, high pressure region when the flow suppression has been occurred this is a flow suppression line and when the flow suppression lines has been happened there is a no point of there is a no validity of boundary layer theory at that section right that is invalid uh, theory of boundary layer when we have the flow suppressions you have the valid theory till this point till this the flow suppression has not been occurred the moment flow suppression has occurred there is a no point of talking about boundary layer theory it is invalid right here you can see i i'll make here this green color this is the flow suppression and this is what we have the boundary layer the black color one now once it is done let me know done so the last problem i will discuss actually uh remaining part i will discuss apart uh, along with this uh, pitot tube and uh, what we call pitot static probe this 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 is the question let me know the answer uh, what is the answer for this question See guys, Bernoulli equation is valid under the steady state conditions only along the any two points in inviscid potential flow. Potential flow means a rotational incompressible flow. A rotational incompressible flow. See, all of you done the mistake. Anyone know the correct answer? See, between any two points in both inviscid flow and potential flow. See, inviscid flow, you can have inviscid flow plus a rotational flow. You can have inviscid flow. plus rotational flow i told you one example of what force vortex so we cannot apply the bernoulli equation between any two points in this one suppose here and here point 2 bernoulli equation total energy we cannot equate e is what p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z total energy that cannot be constant between any two points. But if I take here one and two, 
I can write E1 equal to E2. They are mentioning the two conditions. One is inviscid flow. Second, they are mentioning potential flow. When I take any potential flow, any potential flow, any potential flow. Potential flow is what? Irrotational plus incompressible. And all the irrotational flows are inviscid flow. So we can apply Bernoulli equation between any two points in that potential flow. That is a valid statement. But between any two points for an inviscid flow, we cannot apply Bernoulli. Right? So only along this streamline, if you are having this streamline 1 and 3, then only you can apply E1 equal to E3. Right? In the inviscid flow and between any two points in a potential flow, A will be correct. So, sorry, make a note of it. What are the D statement only along the streamline in both? See, potential flow anywhere we can apply, right? So again, wrong. C, between any two points in inviscid flow, again, wrong. This is wrong statement. And only along the streamline, that is also, we can apply anywhere. The so example is force vortex. So they want to test through this, through this question whether you know about force vortex or not. So you can see that in gate exam, they are testing everything. They are not at all leaving any single topic also, minute topic of uh, important segments. Once it is done, you can leave for the day and try to solve the remaining problem which is being there in the slides. Thank you all. No doubt. Done for all. Okay.